evening it's Quantrade Edge and today I just wanted to do a real simple video on how to calculate the at the money straddle um, as you know in some of our uh, market preparation uh, some of our strategies we like to know what the straddle is to then determine if the move based on news like the CPI tomorrow is going beyond that which the options market expected or not and that has ramifications as to whether we think it will reverse or continue to trend. So uh, there were some questions uh, uh, in the comments about how to actually do it and you know, asking if I could do a video to, to walk through how it's done. Um, and so we're gonna do this tomorrow morning, but I'll, I'll use the current numbers just to um, uh, you know, use as an example. The S&P is currently trading at 48.2775. Let's just assume it's 48.30. Um, you know, you, you could take the numbers for 48.25, the numbers for 48.30, average them all. It's late. I'm lazy. I'm um, just going to look at 48.30. And so basically, take the mid-market quote on both of these. So the mid-market uh, here um, is basically, uh, you know, let's just call it 14.75 because it'll add up nicely. 14.75, mid-market here, 17.25. That means the at the money straddle is 32 points. Uh, that means a move from this uh, number up of 32 or down of 32 is what the options market uh, expects. And beyond that, the options market gets surprised and a positive feedback loop uh, can ensue. So again, we're using the January 11th option, which is the zero DTE for tomorrow and we pick the strike that is closest to the current traded price. Uh, if you want to do another example, let's look at the spiders. Um, the spiders closed at 476.56, so basically 476 and a half. And this is Interactive Brokers when you, um, well, let's see if this will pop up below, no. It's popping up outside of the screen, but um, there we go. Now it's back in here. So this is how we pull up options in IB. We said it was 476 and a half. So here, this is how we select the day. We want the January 11th. There's no 460, 76 and a half. So we could just take 76 and 77. So we have the 76 call, 76 put, 77 call, 77 put, and we'll just average all these together. Um, look at the mid market because if this, for whatever reason, didn't trade, you know, it could say a dollar fifty, it could say four dollars, it could say whatever it wants to here. If there just hasn't hasn't been a trade, uh, you know, spy options are pretty liquid, but sometimes you will see a discrepancy here. So, you know, the average of those two, uh, you know, call it. 2.045, 1 1.215, 1 1.51, 1.685. 1 Divide all that by two because you know we have four legs here. So two is averaging the straddle, and the straddle is thirty uh, three dollars and twenty three cents, which makes sense. The spy is roughly one tenth of the value of the. Um, futures and that was 32 points if I remember right 32 uh, now it looks like 16 and a half 15 and a half yeah right about 32 and this is 3.23 um, so that would mean where we closed uh, sorry wrong one 476.56 plus 3.23 is 479. 79. Looks like it's about as close as I'm going to get to it. There we go. And also, if we take this close and subtract it, 476.56 minus 3.23, 473.33, it's just below the low.
take that down to a five minute chart and pretty much, you know, it, you know, assuming this is where we open, which, you know, obviously overnight things can happen, um, but the market expects, the options market expects that SPY stays between here and here. So to the extent we get um, the surprise news on the CPI and we spike down to like here and start to bounce around, odds are it's going to reverse because it didn't go far enough to trigger the what I call a positive feedback loop where you have a trend because if this were to gap down to here, anybody who is short uh, the straddle, short volatility, all of a sudden they have a huge uh, long position and they need to sell stock to hedge. As they sell stock, their options position becomes longer and they have to sell more stock. And as they sell more stock and the price goes down, their options position becomes even longer. And what I mean by it becomes longer is the delta of that, uh, you know, uh, short put uh, that they would have had. The calls already become worthless. The put uh, keeps gaining um, delta. So that's what causes the feedback loop. You know, the, the act of them needing to sell to hedge pushes it down, which increases the amount they need to hedge, which pushes it down, which increases the amount they need to hedge, with push, which pushes it down. That's why it's called a positive feedback loop. And the same thing can happen on the upside. If we gap up to here, anybody who was short these calls, they're getting shorter and shorter. So they need to buy stock to hedge their position. And the act of them buying it pushes it up, which makes them even shorter which makes them have to buy again. And, you know, that's kind of the dynamic where when we get out of this range that is expected by the options market, we can have positive feedback loops in either direction. So that's why we pre-calculate it, especially before binary events like tomorrow's CPI, or when you're looking at stocks during earnings, you know, getting that close and the straddle price right before earnings are released after the bell you know what the market expects. And then all of a sudden the news is released, you know if it's above that level, in which case it's gonna go higher. If it's below this level, you know it's gonna go lower. If it's great news and it, and it comes right up to here, you know, it's probably gonna fail and close the gap. And by the same token, it, it can be crappy news, uh, looks like the end of the world, but it can only get down to here, you know, not refuting that the fundamental news is ugly, but the options market thought it was going to be worse. So there's that positive surprise that it wasn't actually that bad, and you tend to go back to, uh, you know, gap fill, and 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 this is just dynamics. You know, one day, uh, you know, the day of of that type of move. Uh, I'm not making any judgments or statements about the longer term trends that happen after um, significant fundamental news. But it's just sort of the one-day trend, and man, that's some, that's some artwork there. But anyway, I hope it uh, conveyed the idea. Just a quick video. I'd like to get to bed, and uh, tomorrow is going to be a big, big morning with the uh, CPI release. Uh, good night.